Chapter 61, Alter Group Although the question had been asked, Ray's felt like he was in a situation where he was forced to give only one answer. What would they do if he said no? After telling him all of this, they wouldn't just let him go, and they had a card they could use against him, given the situation he was in right now. What tasks will I be given? Ray's asked. I'm sure I won't be very helpful. I'm just a kid. Our group is one that works behind the scenes, Himmy answered. Because of Charlotte's powers and my investigation skills, we are on the investigation team and get sent all over the continent. You will first start as a low-ranking field agent. You won't have access to a lot of information, but your duties will be small. Once a month, we will ask you for a report, and you are to report any unusual activities that could be related to our line of work. If something comes up in the area you are in, then you might get called to help us out now and again. The terms didn't sound too bad. As a field agent, he could still continue to grow his strength. The leader of the whole altar group was a six star, so eventually Rays would outgrow him in power, and when the time was right, he could ask for information on how to return to Alterian. I have plans to join the Pagna Academy, Rays explained. If I was to become an agent, would this conflict with any of those duties? What if I become a high position in the world of Pagna? Himmy started to laugh. You are thinking too small, my friend. We already have those who are in high positions, and our organization is already linked up with many clans throughout the continent. The only exception would be the demonic faction. They are a troublesome group who have a tendency to use whatever they find to raise their power and have tried multiple times to take over the entire continent. It's true what they say, you know, history repeats itself, so if you can, I would stay clear of them. From the sound of things, the demon faction gave most groups trouble. This just made him want to visit such a place more, and he put a mental note down that they were definitely against Alter's influence on this world. If he ever needed a place to avert from their eyes, this was the place to head to. The Pagna Academy is no trouble at all. Becoming a warrior, showing off your strength and rising to the top, we don't care. Just answer to our call when we need you. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that the Pagna Academy is a great place for you since you will be meeting so many new faces. So I have free reign to do as I wish only needing to report to you if I suspect one of these world-changing items or meet an otherworlder that knows nothing about the Altar organization. Heeding to your call when you need me. Other than that, I can do as I wish? Rays asked, trying to clarify the situation. Yes, there is a simple rule to follow, though, Charlotte nodded. The use of magic is not forbidden, but someone finding it out is. This includes enchanting items yourself. Ray's kept his head down and was smirking. He had already broken their rules, but it didn't matter. He would continue to do trades with the Pagna warriors, under the guise that he was the Dark Magus from another world. No one would suspect someone as young as Ray's to be a five-star enchanter, as well as a nine-star mage. If items started to appear in the world of Pagna that didn't belong, they would just suspect it was someone else. Thinking of this, it reminded him of something. Stretching out both of his hands in front of him, there was a flicker of aura in the air. For a split second, magic swirled around his hand. Charlotte watched closely but was unable to tell what type of magic it was. Are you able to buy this off me? Ray's opened the palm of his hand, revealing a power stone. It appears you have been quite busy already, Himmy claimed. We can purchase these level 1 power stones from you at around 10 silver coins, but those in Altar won't always be in a situation where they can buy these off you. If you join the Academy, it won't seem so strange for you to have crystals, and you will be able to sell them at will. A lot of Ray's problems were being solved with meeting these people. The extreme measures that he had planned in his head, he wouldn't have to go through with them after all. Last question then, Ray smiled. If I join your organization, I assume you will help me out of this situation? Of course, Himmy smiled. We look out for our own, and the more helpful you are and give back, the more we are willing to help you when you are in a tough situation of your own. Just never betray Alter, and you'll be fine. From the constant looks that Himmy was giving Rays and the emphasis he would put on certain words, 
It felt like his mind was being read, and yet there was no sense of magic. He must have been a pretty good detective in his world, Ray's thought. In a lot of ways, he's far more dangerous than the mage by his side. Okay, Ray's said, lifting his hands up. I will join the Altar organization and follow your rules. In reality, the restraints that Altar put on him were just things he wouldn't have been able to do whether he joined them or not. If they were as big as they said they were, then it would have only been a matter of time. You've made the right choice. Now, let's get you out of here. Chapter 62 Bad Luck Since the main room in the Red Brigade base was being used, the rest of the elders had gathered in one of the dining rooms. They were sitting at a round table with tea in front of each of them, but it had hardly been touched as the conversations hadn't died down since the interrogation had started. I don't understand why we are wasting our time, Elder Targress said. His whole face was shaking as he slammed the table in the same spot over and over again. There are no other white-haired ones among the clan, nor among anyone of significance. Only those with no names. We should just get rid of them all, including the kid. It's too high of a risk for that to happen to the rest of our disciples. Especially if they are from the demonic faction. Elder Targress had been the most vocal about getting rid of Rays without a second thought, and he had every reason to be, since he was Vaughn's father. With his position in mind, he tried to state points that didn't make him seem so biased in the situation, even though everyone at the table knew this fact. With us having greater power than the normal folk in this town, we have a responsibility not to act so brazen, Elder Yon replied. If we go killing people due to one suspect, out of fear for what might happen to us, then we will completely lose the trust of the people, and the situation could turn very sour fast for us. Some of the elders nodded in agreement, while the others just turned their heads, placing both hands on the cup in front of them, sipping their tea while mumbling under their breath. Can I ask Elder Yon, why are you putting so much trust into these altars? Elder Nimpard asked. Are we to just blindly trust the outcome of their result without running our own investigation? These people are strangers to us. Strangers to you, but not to those in the Dark Faction, Yon answered. Many in the Dark Faction, including clans much bigger than us, use them. If they can trust them, why can't we? As if to end their conversation, the door was slid open as a clan member entered the room. He placed both of his hands together, bowing down. The interrogators say they are ready to see you and deliver the result. All six of the elders got up from their seats and started to make their way to the main interrogation room. By their side, there were also six warriors, one of them including Sonny in the group. As they stepped into the main hall, they could see Ray's standing still, cuffed with two standing by his side. We have heard that you have managed to come up with a result? Jan asked. Yes, Hilly replied. You will be glad to know that the young boy here is innocent. He was simply a bystander in his family's death. In fact, a survivor who has been through a lot. As for your disciple, there could be many reasons as to who it was. Another person with white hair? One trying to frame this young man, perhaps? But what has happened to your disciple is impossible for this young person to do. We can confirm with certainty, and I will happily put my balls on the line, that this young man is innocent. Balls? Elder Yan replied, finding the phrasing a bit strange to the point where it made his face blush a little. What is this? Targress stepped up, walking in front of the others. How can we just believe what they say just like that? Tell me, how did you manage to come to the conclusion that he's innocent? Where's the proof? Our methods are not allowed to be exposed, Charlotte answered, trying to calm down the situation. They had been in a similar scenario before, and it was best that they all cooled their heads. Targress, I told you before we must respect the outcome, Elder Yon stated. Young Rays, I apologize for suspecting you, and I hope we can leave this matter behind us. Stupid fools, Himmy said under his breath. If you want proof of his innocence, then where is the proof of his crimes? Targress was shaking all over, his heart beating rapidly at this moment as well. No. Targress proclaimed loudly, We can't accept your ruling, G, and we can't accept your timidness anymore. With this, I ask for a vote of no confidence in the current head elder, those who are in agreement, 
raise their hand. Raze was unsure what was going on, but judging by the look on the other clan members' faces, this wasn't good news at all. Soon after, four of the elders raised their hands. What is the meaning of this? How could you all go against me over a matter like this? Yon exclaimed, shocked and sweat running down the side of his face. You put the people before the clan, one of the elders mentioned. In order for us to become a clan of significance, we need to focus on the world of Pagna warriors, not the general public. You have long become satisfied with our current position, and you no longer have ambition to rise. And what's wrong with that? Yon replied. Do we not live happy lives? Judging by the expressions and the votes, next to none of them were in agreement with him. You can't do this, Yon claimed. In order to have a vote of no confidence, all previous head elders that are still alive must also be present. Immediately, a smile appeared on Targress's face. Ah yes, just as you said, all previous head elders that are alive must be present, but I'm sure he will soon be very dead. At the temple, having reached the top of the staircase, a squad of fifteen Red Brigade clan members had arrived, swords by their side. They were here on orders and were ready to do what needed to be done. Back in the room, the clan members were wondering what was taking place. It looks like there is a new head elder. Restrain Elder Yan for the time being, unless you want to be banished from the clan. Drawing their swords, one of them was pointed right under Elder Yan's neck. Are you the bringer of bad luck or something, kid? Himmy asked. I mean, betrayal for the head position is a common thing, but why did it have to happen while we were here? With the clan members now doing as he asked, Elder Targress had a smile on his face as he stepped forward and looked at Rays. And you, the one who harmed my son. Targress shifted his feet and crossed the distance of five meters in a moment, lifting Rays up by the scruff of his clothes. Rays had almost forgotten these old men. They were also Pagna warriors. I will make you go through a hell that's far worse than what he's going through. Targress smiled, but he noticed that even while lifted off the ground, with his feet dangling, Rays lifted his cuffed hands and pointed them toward his stomach, placing them on his skin. You think you can do something in a situation like this? I can tell your heart's beating fast, kid. You're scared out of your boots. Targress was clearly enjoying this. Is this a situation where I have permission? Rays asked, softly. N. One in. It was surprising for Himmy. A small smirk appeared across his face. I don't see how else we're going to get out of this situation. With both palms pressed against his stomach, dark aura started to float around his hands. Dual dark pulse, Rays shouted. A ripple of dark aura went off, and the strike had hit Targress right in the stomach. His feet lifted off the ground, and he was chucked across the room, falling on his back and lying on the floor, while Rays landed on his feet. That was it was dark magic, Charlotte said. Chapter 63 combining spells. The Red Brigade clan had no trouble breaking through the front gate. With a swipe of their swords, the wooden panel on the other side was sliced, and immediately, the group went to enter. They weren't here on official business, so there was no need for them to alert the others of their presence. This Red Brigade group, in particular, was a group of fifteen, all of them adults, meaning that they had already experienced life in the Pagna Academy. Still, most of them had stayed at being stage one Pagna warriors, but were at the top end, while the leaders in charge of the attack were stage two Pagna warriors. Entering the courtyard, they immediately started to rush forward and were heading straight for the main temple. Huh, what are you doing here? One of the kids pointed with their hand, and without slowing down, with a swipe of the sword, the hand was sliced right off. The kid screamed at the top of its lungs, looking at its hand. The child was just curious as it stared at the clan members coming towards them. The members that they had seen multiple times visit them before, so they just thought it was no different. All the children here are no names at the temple, the clan member shouted. No one must know what we did here today, so there is no harm in getting rid of them. Lifting the sword, the clan member was ready to thrust it right through the child until a foot came out and hit the man right in the head. He was sent flying back, crashing into the temple wall, with a large foot indent in his skull, killing him on the spot. Why are you trying to harm the children? 
Kron had burst out of his office room the moment he heard the cries, and seeing blood, his heart was racing at was in front of him. When? Why are members of the Red Brigade clan attacking this temple? Don't you know who I am? Kron stated. The members had started to draw their weapons and formed a formation around Kron, circling him. It's because of who you are. We are doing this, the clan member shouted. With everything happening, the children couldn't help but slide their doors open to see what was going on, and to see weapons drawn at their teacher, they had no clue how to react. All of you get out of here, run through the forest, head to the town where people can see you, Kron shouted. Immediately, one of the children closest to the door had attempted to do just that, but as they did, a clan member stood in their path, ready to swing their sword. Seeing this, Kron stomped his foot down, and a crack went across the floorboards with power, exploding right where the clan member was, causing his feet to fall and his sword to miss. Safa had opened the door as well and immediately turned her head. To look at Simeon. His eyelids were incredibly heavy, with him constantly mumbling under his breath. He was in no state to leave this place. Looking outside, she didn't know why this had to happen now of all times, because there was only one more hour to go. One more hour until the seal was undone, but what were they going to do now? Inside the Red Brigade clan, the elders along with the other members were looking at. Targress, who was on the ground, his clothes had been burnt away, revealing his skin. He had been blown away in a single strike. Was that a type of palm strike? One of the elders thought. He must have a large amount of chi to do something like this. Doesn't this confirm it? He really is someone who's been sent from the demonic faction. We must eliminate him. Based on his own powers, Raze knew that Elder Targress was still alive. He hadn't gained any mana from using his spell. All of the elders were higher stage Pagna warriors than the rest, so it was somewhat to be expected. Taking this opportunity while they were distracted, Elder Yan lifted both of his hands filled with chi and broke right through the two swords. He then grabbed onto the heads of the two clan members by his side and threw them into the wall. The exit was blocked, so the only way to clear himself from being surrounded was to jump up high in the air and head towards Rays and the others. It looked like he was almost floating before he landed by their side, and he wasn't the only one that was there. Sonny had decided to join the group, drawing his sword as well. I'm sorry, Raze. I had no idea something like this was going to happen, Sonny said. This was not the type of clan I joined. I don't know why they are doing this. Now wasn't the time to talk about it, though, as the enemy was coming towards them. The clan members rushed forward, and Charlotte was the first to make a move. Her eyes glowing, she moved her palm in a circular motion. Wind twister, Charlotte called out, and from the palm of her hand, nearly the entire group had been pushed back, with some of them even being lifted up in the air. However, the elders were able to withstand the wind and continued to charge forward, while the men that had fallen from the initial attack had gotten back up. Lifting his hands up, Rays used his own magic. Dark pulse, a beam shot out from his hand, but the elder was able to jump to the side, avoiding the attack. A straight telegraphed attack like so could easily be avoided by them, and his chained hands weren't making things easier. Do you have the fire attribute? Raze asked Charlotte. I do, but it's my weakest attribute. I can't produce a spell on the same scale as before. The most I can do is an ember. Ember was a one-star fire magic spell, which would be useless against these, Based on what Ray saw, her light magic and wind magic would be at the three-star level. That's fine. Use the skill Gust first, and then Ember. It will have the same effect, Ray shouted out. From the look on Charlotte's face, she wasn't so sure. Why was a two-star mage giving her advice in the first place? Nonetheless, in the desperate situation, she decided to give it a go. In her right hand, the Tier 2 wind spell, Gust, a strong wind was summoned, and had hit the elder at the front, doing next to nothing. Then with Ember, a small orange flame had been produced. When the two touched, it had produced a strong flame, like that of a flamethrower, that went directly into the face of the elder, burning his body to a crisp until he eventually fell on the floor and collapsed. One of the elders had been killed. It worked. It really worked, Charlotte thought. 
combining spells like so, she had tried in the past, but she had tried using Wind Twister instead. The power of her wind attribute would be too much and overpower the flames, burning them out. How could a two-star mage and one so young know stuff like this? Seeing the dead elder on the ground, Ray's smiled. He may not yet have his skills back, but all of the knowledge he had from being a nine-star mage could still help him even now. Chapter 64 Power from Another World The sensation that Charlotte could feel on her hands was lingering for a moment. The power of combining two spells was something that she had never successfully experienced before. Of course, in her studies, she had tried mixing one or two attributes, but due to the different strengths in the core, it was an extremely difficult thing to do. On top of that, combining spells at times could be very dangerous for the user. Someone always had to be the guinea pig in a particular situation, but since there were only other mages available, no one wanted to do it. This fact had left the lack of combination spells among mages, and those that were successful in finding out a few here and there were extremely petty. Having gone through the risks, they were unwilling to share their knowledge. After all, knowledge was also power among mages. Although not all were like this, some mages did share what they had learned through the academy, but all of this was why Charlotte was shocked. How did Rays know that the combination of spells would work? How did he even know about fire spells as well as two-star wind spells? As a two-star mage and at his age, he would still be focusing on his main attribute and learning the spell formations for those, yet he had directed her like an expert. Yawn, Rays shouted out. Get these cuffs off me if you want us all to live. What Rays had done was unprecedented in the world of Pagna. He had shouted at an elder and one of even higher ranking than him, but now was not the situation to worry about that. From underneath his robe, he had pulled out the key. After seeing the strange sorcery that Charlotte had produced, the rest, even the elders, were a bit reluctant to move forward. Damn you, how dare you do this to the clan? Elder Targress shouted as he was finally getting up from the floor. He lifted his arm, pointing to Ray's with it shaking. You are a no-name. You have no value in this world. You don't do anything to help it progress forward. Instead, you are just a leech that uses up the resources of us that need to grow. So how could you even think to do something like this? The key had been inserted, and with a twist, the heavy locks fell off to the ground. Ray's was rubbing his inner wrists due to the cuffs being too tight and started to walk forward, ahead of the others. Even Charlotte, with her skills and the help they were getting, wasn't so confident, yet Ray's was showing no fear as he took steps in front of them all. You're right. I am nothing, so you have no reason to be afraid of me, Ray's said, lifting his hand up and pointing it toward the elders. So then tell me, why are you all so scared? Dark pulse, Ray's shouted. Immediately, the elders moved and flinched, jumping from their position, but nothing had come out of Ray's hands, nothing had hit the ground, and seeing their act, he couldn't help but laugh. Ha! Ray's laughed. And you guys are meant to be these all-respectful elders, yet you are going to kill me. Well, take this respect and shove it up your arse. Dark pulse, Ray said silently under his breath. The words were spoken just to link with the formation and image in one's head, allowing them to produce the skills they needed to use immediately. This time, a beam did shoot out, but the elders were still able to avoid it and came right at them. Going head to head, though, Jan jumped forward, and his fist clashed with one of the elders' legs, sending a shockwave out in the room. Sonny was fighting with two of the clan members who were using their swords. They were hasty in their attacks, so he could avoid them, moving back here and there, but he was finding it hard to strike. However, Charlotte saw an opening and twisted her hand. Wind slice. A line of magic came out, hitting the member right in the stomach, cutting through his robes and touching his skin, lifting him up in the air and sending him crashing into the wall. We have to get out of here, and quickly, Jan shouted. The ex-leader that they are after, it's K, Ron. It means they will have sent others to the temple. He's not as strong as he used to be. Hearing these words, an image of the floor soaked in blood came into Ray's mind. Of him returning, and on the floor, everyone soaked in blood, their limbs having been torn apart, and a voice sounded in his head. 
You forced me to do this, Raze. I didn't want to play my hand, but you had to get involved. At the back of the room, a man in a robe, covered with his eyes, shining off the moonlight. Shaking his head, he could see Targress coming right at him. Raze lifted one of his hands out while shifting his feet back slightly. Dark pulse. The attack left the palm of his hand and struck the floor. Targress had leapt to the side, avoiding the attack, and came right at Raze, but he was unfazed by this, and instead, the dark mage had a smile on his face. His feet moved forward, powered by the chi in his body. The two-step shift, and then swinging out his hand, it went to meet Targress dead on. Dark magic was swirling around his knuckles. Dark strike. The fist collided, hitting knuckle on knuckle with Targress. The elder was able to block the attack on time, but only by moving his own fist that was still in motion. When the fist hit, a pulse of dark magic came out, amplifying his strike, which sent Targress skidding across the floor once more. Did he just use his Pogna skills and combine them with magic? The level of magic, it was clearly at the two-star stage, yet amplifying it with a hit. I don't think I know any mages that have been able to do such a thing since coming to Pogna, Charlotte thought. There was a reason for that as well, that Charlotte was unaware of, but Ray's was not. He had a special body that was different compared to everyone else because his body was one from Pogna. However, despite the boosted strength in the attack, Elder Targress was a stage 3 Pogna warrior, and he wouldn't go down so easily. You too. Himmy had spoken for the first time and started to walk forward, his heavy feet plodding across the floor. Charlotte, Rays, get to the temple and rescue those kids. I would hate to have blood on our hands of those unrelated to all of this. Looking back, Sonny was wondering if the large man was like Rays and the girl, maybe he knew some sorcery as well. Wait, but if them two go, will we be able to handle this on our own? Sonny asked. The numbers weren't on their side at all. Out of anger, Targress had gotten up again and started running forward. Himmy went and opened up his large brown overcoat, reaching inside and following it. A loud bang was heard. It was just one noise that filled the entire room and stopped everyone in their steps. Now Targress was no longer moving, as he had a small hole in his head. His body swayed to the side, collapsing on the ground. In Himmy's hand, he held a small object that many had never seen before. A small amount of smoke came out from the tip due to the heat that had been produced. What Himmy had was something that was not from this world. Reaching into the other side of his overcoat, he pulled out the same object and was now holding them both out, pointing them toward the clan members. I'll be fine, Himmy answered, holding two guns in his hands. Chapter 65 A New Weapon the loud bang in the room had come from an instrument that the warriors of Pogna had never seen before. They looked on the ground at Targress, and unlike the times before when they were hit with sorcery from rays, he wasn't getting up this time. The blood pouring from his head showed that quite clearly. The powers of Chi made a person superhuman, and when they reached close to the pinnacle of the initial stage, they would be able to block regular swords with their bodies. However, None of the elders had reached such a stage, which made the technology of something like a gun a deadly weapon. It's quite difficult to get ammo in this world, so please, don't make me waste too much? Himmy asked. One of the other elders took a step, trying to move, and instantly Himmy moved, firing out another shot. The loud bang occurred, but unlike with Raze's magic, they were unable to move fast enough. The bullet went right through the side of the elder's head, causing him to fall straight to the floor. Witnessing people die so easily in front of their very eyes was a very frightening thing for them. Not a single member wanted to move after that. They didn't quite understand what was happening, just that while whatever the large man was holding was pointed at them, their lives were at risk. Listening to the words of Himmy, Charlotte burst into action as she ran towards the center of the room. Everyone was frozen out of fear, but she still needed to be careful. The one thing mages had compared to Pogna warriors was the ability to use their magic at a distance. Seeing this, Himmy caught on quickly. You two, it's best if you close your eyes. These people clearly knew more than them. Elder Jan was starting to understand that the altar group was able to do things beyond what they could understand, 
so if they wanted to live or get out of the situation, it was best for them to just listen. Charlotte lifted one of her hands in the air, and her eyes started to glow slightly white. I see what she's trying to do now, Ray's closed his eyes as well. It was a move that was extremely effective that was used by many in combat. Illuminate. Out from the palm of Charlotte's hand, a bright white light shined, covering the entire room. Those who still had their eyes open were blinded and even felt a great stinging sensation. Open, Charlotte shouted, the signal that it was now okay for the rest of them to do so. When they did, they could see that many of the clan members were rolling about on the floor. The elders were squinting down hard, and even when they opened their eyes, they could only see gray blurs through their vision. Running out of the room, they quickly went down the hallway. Head towards the back exit. There will be fewer of them, Ray's ordered, and Sushin. As they took a turn, they could see more clan members with weapons in their hands coming towards them, four in total. Can you deal with two of them? I'll take care of the others, Charlotte asked. Not unless you want me to kill them, Ray's answered honestly, in the heat of the moment. His mana was already running low. He needed it if he was going to continue to fight at the temple. With the way his enchanted ring worked as well, he needed to kill to be able to regain a small amount of mana back. At the same time, he wasn't confident enough in just the two-step shift skill that he knew. It hadn't been long since he had become a Pagna warrior, so he had nothing else he could use. Do you think I have unlimited mana or something? I can't do this by myself. Charlotte shouted as she started to swirl both of her hands. Wind twister, she shouted, and two large whirlwinds came out of her hands, knocking right into the stomachs of the front two. It had banged one into the other, which allowed the two to get past without the need to use any more skills. Eventually, the two managed to go out the back, where there was just a wall they needed to get over. With a jump and using the power of the wind, Charlotte had reached the top of the wall. For Ray's, he gathered the chi that he had in his body and used the muscles to leap up, just reaching the top of the wall with his hand. He then pulled himself up to the wall. It looks like being a Pagna warrior has its uses. I'm getting a little jealous, she said. It was time for the two of them to head to the temple and to do so as quickly as they could. Looking at the sky, though, Rays could see the sun was starting to set. Wait a moment, the time. I was in that cell for an entire night, and now it's already heading towards evening, which means it should be any moment now. Back at the temple, Kron had been putting up a tough fight. He was huffing and panting, but his clothes were covered in marks while his skin had been slashed with the sword all over. His blood was dripping, and he was getting weaker by the second. Formations were extremely powerful things and used in the right way. They would allow lower-ranked Pagna warriors to take on those who were higher-ranked. The kids, most of them got away, right? Kron had also been fighting desperately, pushing himself while the kids were able to get out of their room and escape. This old man, he won't fall, the clan member shouted annoyed. Now that there were no children for them to use, he knew it was going to be hard to take the ex-leader down. Check the rooms, see if there are any of those runts left, the squad leader shouted. Those at the side quickly went swinging the door open. Kron went to move, but he was met with a sword thrust at him from the front and the side, stopping his movements. The clan member was opening door by door, looking inside to see if there was anyone, and when he swung one door open, his eyes laid on two who were in the room. I found some, the man shouted. Immediately, he went to grab Safa, who was standing in front of her, but she leaned back in time and struck with a large kick to the side of his leg. It was a solid hit, but there was next to no power. What is this kid even saying? The clan member said as he moved in closer. There was a chill in the air as he got closer. Something wasn't quite right. I, I, I. Simeon continued to mumble, repeating again and again. I, I. At that moment, the ring on his ear started to glow slightly. The requirements for breaking the seal have been achieved. The seal is now breaking. Chapter 66 Item Unsealed Simeon's mind had already gone past the breaking point. He felt like his head was melting, and even in front of him, he could only see an area of colors moving. He could hear the words and somewhat tell someone had entered, 
but how far they were, or even where he was. He wasn't sure if he had already died, but he just knew one thing. He had to stay awake. No matter what, he needed to make sure that his eyes stayed open. Otherwise, everything he was going through now would be for nothing. Memories flooded into his mind of when he was with his sister. The feeling he felt at the time, where he thought death was around every corner. The feeling he had right now. That was when a voice could be heard in his head. Simeon, I promise you, no matter what, you are going to get out of this. You are going to survive. The image in front of him, of his sister being attacked, and the final words she said to him ringing in his head over and over. Live, Simeon. You have to live. A rush of power entered into Simeon's body, and the mushy image he could see in front of him started to disappear. He was gaining nearly all of the senses he had around him. He was becoming aware of what was happening. This was the power of the seal breaking. Having endured three days of torture, the item's power was flowing through Simeon, giving him a burst of energy. Wait, why is there a Red Brigade member in here? Simeon thought. To the right, he could see Safa getting up off the ground. She looked hurt, and the clan member's sword was already drawn. After getting up from a daze, Safa could see the man approaching Simeon, and she ran forward, tackling him around the waist. What are you doing, you little bustard? Get off me! The clan member shouted, and with his sword raised in the air, he swung it down. No! Simeon screamed at the top of his lungs and darted forward from his position. He held out his arm to block the attack. He still wasn't quite sure what was going on, whether this was just another illusion he was seeing, the same as the one he had been going through in his head with his sister. I can't let the same thing happen again, not this time. The strong thoughts allowed Simeon to be willing to sacrifice anything, and his arm had been given up in the process. The clan member only needed one of the kids to distract the ex-leader, so it didn't matter if one of them went, so he swung with full force. As it hit Simeon's arm, though, a loud clang was heard, the same sound when metal struck against metal. The sword was pushed down, but it wouldn't go through Simeon's arm. What the, am I still dreaming? Why isn't it cutting through my arm? Simeon said. You, are you a Pagna warrior with the steel body? But you're just a kid. The clan member, furious, decided to shift his stance and threw a punch, hitting Simeon right in the gut. It was a powerful blow, with chi embedded into it. A heavy clunk was felt, and the knuckles of the clan member were sore. Seeing the opportunity, Safa jumped in the air, kicking her leg off the wall, and punched the clan member right in the face. Seeing the clan member stumble, that's when Simeon thought that this might be his only chance. He rushed forward and went to perform what Kron had taught him, the two-step shift with a punch right at the end. His footwork was still a little clumsy, his fist didn't go through the most direct path, but when it hit the man in the side of his ribs, a crack could be heard as the bones were breaking. The man knelt over, allowing for Simeon to raise both hands and bash them on the top of the clan member, sending him to the floor. He wasn't moving, either passed out or dead, but he wasn't sure, and the only sounds in the room that were left were of him and Safa huffing and panting. After a few moments, Simeon looked at both of his hands. The bottom part of it was stained with blood from his hit on the top of the man's skull. How did I do that, and how did I stop the attack from the sword? It should have completely gone through my raw A. Arm? None of this is making sense? Simeon started to think about what the man said. Was he a Pagna warrior who had cultivated in the steel body arts? But he had never done such a thing and he hadn't even finished producing a solid core. He wasn't a Pagna warrior, yet he and Safa were able to beat the man. The earring, Simeon raised his hand, stroking the bottom part of it. Reyes said, if I managed to last the whole time, then I would be able to obtain power outside of this world. Mythical rank item, black steel earring, unsealed. This earring can only be worn by the user who unsealed the item, otherwise the item will be treated as a normal earring. Effects. The user is able to create a common steel body. The strength of the steel body is evolvable. The steel body's attributes can be changed and influenced temporarily by different attributes of magic that are placed into the earring. Simeon had no clue about the effects of the earring, since magic was needed for one to be able to see what was taking place, 
but he had obtained a mythical great item, something that Reyes had never done in the past, a feat that had an almost legendary status. An item that if Alter found out about it, they would do anything to seal it away so it could never be used again. Because Simeon hadn't become a Pogna warrior, but was using an item that contained the power of magic. Chapter 67, The Worst, in Pogna. Mr. Kron had noticed that one of the room's door had remained shut. It was likely that one of the temple kids was still in there. As he saw one of the clan members, all he could do now was hope that they would be okay, while trying to best the situation he was in as well. Before I can help others, I need to focus on myself as well. Kron decided to make a break for it, heading toward one side of the formation. Three of the clan members dashed forward with swords in their hands and stabbed right into his forearms, but Kron didn't slow down, and instead he continued and pushed forward. With the swords impaled into his body, he grunted through the pain and pushed. His muscles were strong, and the chi fueling them stopped them from pushing inside him further and hurting his vitals. The arms of the attackers were twisting as he continued to push forward. They had no choice to let go. Kron burst through the doors and leapt down the staircase, landing into the courtyard. Blood was dripping from his wounds, and when he went to stand up, he had already stumbled to the side a few times. My chi is running out, and my body is breaking. I was never able to break through to the fourth stage. If I had done so, then maybe the situation I am in now would have been better. I knew there was a chance a day like this might come, and yet, I put the thought in the back of my mind, giving up on the Pagna lifestyle, but it's true what they say, you can never leave Pagna. Turning around, Kron had braced himself. He could see the clan members running down the stairs confidently. However, he could see that not far behind them, running through the doors, were two kids from the temple. That's Simeon and Safa, the two of them are alive? How did they make it? There's no clan members behind them. Is it possible, did they manage to beat them somehow? Seeing this, a smile appeared on Kron's face. He had somewhat given up, and yet here the children were defying the impossible. He was a little ashamed of himself. Setting himself up in a fighting stance again, Kron was ready. I will take down as many as I can, so the children can survive. The clan member at the front had leapt up in the air, the sword ready to strike, until a slash of wind had hit the person, sending them back to where they came from. The clan members immediately stopped, and as they did, Simeon jumped in the air from behind and swung both of his hands, hitting another one on the back of the head. A heavy blow, as if one was struck with a blunt weapon made of metal. Simeon didn't quite know what had happened, but he knew his hits and his body itself were reinforced with great strength. The clan member turned to his side and could see Safa. He went to strike, but Simeon dived in the way wholeheartedly, stopping the hit with his chest. Safa then came in shifting from the side and punched several times, with Simeon delivering a blow. In, with the two of them, they made quite the good team. Safa was skilled, one of the best at the temple, but she hadn't completely formed her Dantian core, so her hits were weak, even if partially filled with chi. Kron was unsure of what was happening, but he needed to act as well. He avoided a strike from the sword, moving his head, and delivered a heavy punch in the face of his own. While behind him, several more wind strikes came and hit the other clan members. They were hit directly. To them it felt like an invisible force had struck them, and it was a powerful one as well. By his side, Kron could see an orange-haired girl swinging her arms. He could only assume it was her doing. Eventually, only one clan member remained. Crap. Crap. Everyone was taken out. I have to go back to the base. The clan member had given up and started to run toward the entrance. As he went toward the open doors, he saw someone walking through, a white-haired boy. That's one of the temple kids. Get out of my way, the clan member shouted, drawing his sword. Ray's lifted his head, looking straight forward, and stopped in his stray. Axe. You were the ones that brought this on yourselves. You were the ones that decided to act, not me. So you deserve this. The dark magic swirled around Ray's fist. Then as the man rushed forward, Ray's shifted forward. Dark strike. His fist landed right in the man's face, twisting his head inward. It was a powerful hit full of chi, and then the pulse of dark magic. 
It broke his teeth, shattering them apart while ripping the skin off, sending him right back to where he was and onto the floor. Darkness Attribute 25 Oh, that gave me more than I would get when killing beasts or the other humans from before. Could it be that different stage Pagna warriors also contribute more to the darkness power as well? It was a theory, and only one he could test out in a certain way. Continuing forward, Reyes was looking at the scene, and he could see Simeon standing right next to his sister. His eyes sunken, but with a smile on his face, he seemed to be happy, whatever the outcome was. It looks like we might have jumped the gun, rushing here a little bit. Having passed some of the children and seeing what state they were in, Charlotte had used her wind magic to increase the speed of her steps, getting there before Ray's, but even she was surprised with how many had been dealt with. This is going to be a real pain to clean up. Charlotte scratched the back of her head and took off her hat for a second. She was sweating underneath. It had been a long time since she had to work so hard in a case like this. When she went to put her hat back on, her eyes laid on something that made her heart sink deep into her stomach. Her eyes opened wide as she held out her hand. Get away! Charlotte screamed at the top of her lungs towards Simeon and Safa. Behind the two of them, several sparks were going off, and a portal had opened up behind them. It was one of the worst things that could occur in the world of Pagna. It was a portal break. Chapter 68 Portal Break all eyes were fixed on the portal that now stood in the center of the courtyard. It hovered slightly above the ground while emitting a strange humming sound, and sparks in the air continued to flicker around it. This is exactly the same as the portals I've opened, but why has one of them come here, and now of all times? Rays began to ponder, recalling the memories of what Himmy and Charlotte had told him. The portals seemed to be drawn to strong forms of magic. One of the reasons they refrained from using magic extensively in the world of Pagna. Perhaps it was a combination of Ray's spells and Charlotte's abilities, or another idea crossed his mind. When the earring was unsealed, depending on its level, it released powerful magic as well. With all these factors combined, a portal had opened, and it was what Ray's had learned as a portal break. Not a temporary portal that would disappear, but one that permanently remained open allowing creatures to pass through. This isn't good. Kron looked nervous, beads of sweat trickling down his face, more than when he had faced the Red Brigade clan members. Currently, the clan is in a severely weakened state. I'm not in the best condition either. If a break were to happen now, there would be no one to protect the people. They'll all die. It was true. Ray's had no idea how many clan members would survive after Himmy was through with them. They also had no clue about the level of creatures that could emerge from the portal. Simeon had taken a few steps back, along with Safa, while Charlotte sprang into action. Raze, help me. I can close the portal, but it's going to take some time to draw the formation. With almost no fear, Charlotte slid on her knees across the floor, stopping just beneath the portal. From her hat, she pulled out a piece of chalk and quickly started working. I need you to make sure that nothing kills me. All right, just stop whatever is going to come from the other side. Although Ray's was usually reluctant to help in these situations, he didn't have much choice. If a portal break occurred, the creatures might even overpower him. Currently, closing the portal seemed to be the least troublesome option. Approaching the portal cautiously, Ray's made sure to keep a couple of meters of distance. Getting too close risked it pulling him in and causing harm before he could even react. Drawing the magic circle progressed smoothly, but they knew it wouldn't last. Thin black tentacles, several of them, emerged and immediately reached for the nearest target. Seeing this, Ray's reacted instinctively. Dark pulse! A dark pulse shot out from his hand, hitting the tentacles and causing them to retreat momentarily. However, following the tentacles, a deformed black hand pushed through. It was large and covered in a strange black material resembling moss. Dark Pulse, another attack was unleashed, targeting the arm. Some pieces broke off and fell to the floor, making it flinch back. But the arm remained intact, and visibly a head began to emerge, revealing what was trying to break through. Damn it! Simeon exclaimed, his mouth nearly touching the floor. Is that Gren? But why does he look like that? 
the creature attempting to break through the other side of the portal bore a striking resemblance to Gren, size, facial structure, and overall shape, except for half of his face, which was covered in the same black coral-like moss. It extended diagonally downward, covering half of his face. On the moss-covered side, his eye glowed red. Gren, he's turned into a hybrid, Kron muttered, biting his lower lip. Hybrids were humans who had been transformed by the creatures residing on the other side of the portals. No one knew precisely how it happened, as there had been no eyewitnesses to the transformation. What was known was that it always occurred in the dimensions outside of Pagna. These individuals lost their sanity, behaving like beasts, yet they possessed great power due to retaining their original Pagna bodies, why? Gaining the abilities of the creatures within them. Hybrids were exceedingly dangerous. I thought I might never see you again, that I had missed my chance back then, but it looks like you managed to return, and now I can finish the job. Dark Pulse, Dark Pulse. Two successive Dark Pulses were unleashed. The hybrid Gren moved its arm to block the attacks from reaching its head. The shots were powerful, pushing it back partially into the portal several times. Almost its entire body had been thrust back when the second attack struck. What's taking so long? Reyes asked. If he had drawn the magic circle himself, it would have been completed by now. Besides, two more attacks were his limit. Judging by how the hybrid Gren had reacted, two dark pulses wouldn't suffice. They needed to close the portal. I, I, I need more mana, Charlotte shouted. I don't have enough mana to close this portal. Stretching out his hand, dark magic flickered, and a bottle appeared. He immediately threw it to her while simultaneously launching another dark pulse at the hybrid, keeping it at bay. Drink it and close the damn portal, Ray's commanded. Judging by the color of the liquid, she could only assume it was one thing. Twisting the lid open, she gulped it down. I hope this mana potion gives me enough mana. She could feel the potion's effects coursing through her body, re-energizing her. All the power she had controlled before had returned, not just a portion of it, but all of it. This can't be. What potion is this that can restore all my mana in one go? Why would he have something like this? Did he acquire it from someone, or did he create it himself? Her curiosity would have to wait. Placing both hands on the ground, she activated her mana, causing the magic circle to light up. It formed a barrier around the portal itself, emitting a white glow until the portal was no longer visible. Gradually, the barrier began to fade, as did the magic, and with its disappearance, the portal was gone. Did that woman just stop a portal break? Kron said in disbelief. I didn't even know that was possible. The good news was that the portal break had been averted, and everyone could finally exhale. They were all emotionally and physically exhausted, almost collapsing on the floor. Still, they managed to stay upright and observe their surroundings. It had indeed been a tumultuous day for all of them. Charlotte, satisfied with the outcome and certain that the portal wouldn't return, turned to Ray's, who stood there like a statue. Ray's, about that potion. Where did you? Clap, clap, clap. The sound of clapping echoed from behind, and as they turned around, they saw Elder Yawn, Sunny, and Himmy entering through the gates. You guys did a great job. It must have been quite tough, Himmy commended. But it's not over yet. We now need to deal with the aftermath and fulfill our duty. Hearing these words, Reyes was unsure of what lay ahead. From what he had learned, the world of magic was meant to be kept a secret, and there were witnesses all around, witnesses who were still alive. Chapter 69, An Old Man The Altar Group was a large organization consisting of people from different worlds who now resided in the world of Pagna. This secretive group operated behind the scenes, manipulating events while storing away items they deemed world-changing. Reyes had believed that, after a recent event, the Altar Group wouldn't allow any survivors. However, the situation had turned out better than he could have imagined. Everyone who had witnessed the event, or at least the use of powers, had been gathered in the Red Brigade's main room. Sunny, Safa, Simeon, Kron, and Elder Yon. Those who had seen such events unfold and weren't in that room had already perished. Reyes was surprised by how forgiving the Altar Group seemed, sparing the lives of those who had witnessed the events. They were informed that they would now become part of the Altar organization, with no choice in the matter. 
Each of them would be field agents, similar to Ray's, but with even less access to information about Alter, including the fact that it was composed of otherworlders. Charlotte had explained to Ray's that having eyes and ears everywhere was advantageous, and situations like this arose now and again. After the meeting, the others were sent back to their base. The Red Brigade clan needed to reorganize, and the others needed time to recover. Simeon, in particular, had been sleeping the whole time and had yet to wake up. He had collapsed shortly after Himmy had arrived in the courtyard. Ray's, however, was called into another room where Charlotte wished to speak to him privately. She had a warning regarding the others becoming field agents for Alter. If you continue to stay around these people, and if they ever leak a word about what they saw or magic to others, and Alter finds out about it, then you will be given the order, Charlotte explained. There was no need for Ray's to ask what the order was. He knew it meant he would have to get rid of them. What surprised him, though, was Charlotte keeping a secret about the sealed earring. He had heard Himmy ask for it, and he was sure she would have seen it on Simeon at the time. Maybe not with all the commotion going on, but when Himmy asked where the sealed ring was and asked Charlotte as well, they both stated that they didn't know. Ray's was tempted to ask, but in the end, he didn't have to. You really saved us a lot of trouble back there, Charlotte said, with a big grin on her face, and she had both hands behind her back, which made Ray's a little nervous. N? Honestly, you're a great mage, one that's clearly talented, and I think it would be good if I stayed in contact with you. I think it's best if we stay close and work together. Even in Alter, things aren't completely safe, so it's good to make our own allies outside of it. With an organization the size of Alter, it was a given that they would have problems, especially with those tempted to steal items from them. So he understood, especially since he was one of them. Moving her hands from behind her back, she handed him a light green-colored crystal. It was thicker than the yellow-colored ones Ray's had before. The moment the crystal touched his skin, he knew exactly what it was. That's a level two power stone, Charlotte explained. It's up to you how you want to use it. Get someone to grind it into a chi pill and use it to advance your core and cultivation, or use it to increase the magic in your core, or you can even sell it. If you want my advice, it's always best not to rely too much on one attribute as a mage, and based on the color, you should be able to tell. Raze did know, it was not just a level 2 power stone, but a wind attribute one as well. If he were to consume this into his mana core, he would finally be able to produce wind spells just like Charlotte could. The attribute points would start low, but it was a start and meant he could use other spells besides dark magic and perhaps stop creating cursed items. There's no such thing as a free lunch, Ray said. Just take it. I already told you, I owe you for the mana potion you gave me earlier, and this is to build our relationship. I know you're going to become a special mage, and I want you to remember that I was part of that process. It did make Ray's wonder if maybe this was the reason why she had kept the earring a secret. We'll be leaving this town. We have orders to work on something else. We've been here a while and haven't really solved anything, so they want us back. Anyway, it's up to you what you do next. I think you'll benefit a lot from the Academy, and if you don't join, don't worry. When we need you, we'll be able to find you. Ray's had successfully obtained a crystal out of the situation. He wouldn't absorb it just yet because he wanted to head back to Safa and Simeon first to see the results of the earring. Meanwhile, Charlotte had gone off to join Himmy and the two of them were leaving the place in a large carriage. You seem to be quite interested in that mage. Was there something odd about him? Himmy asked. Charlotte didn't say anything for a while. She was staring out of the carriage, looking at the trees passing by. You know I'm one of the newest altars from Altyrian, Charlotte commented. Well, you see, that mage used dark magic. Honestly, it's not an attribute that many have, and that includes me. But you see, back on Altyrian when I was there, there was a very dangerous mage that used dark magic, someone who went by the name Dark Magus. Just thinking about it, all the hairs on her body stood up tall. And you think this kid could be the Dark Magus? Himmy asked. Ha! Charlotte laughed. That's impossible. 
The Dark Magus would be an old man, and if someone like him did come into this world, I'm not sure anyone could stop him from doing what he wanted. Chapter 70 Welcome to the Family After the significant events of yesterday, Ray's thought it was best for him not to travel to other dimensions, especially since he had seen what happened to Gren. Having completely used his mana up as well and given away his only potion, at the moment, he needed to recover anyway. However, Ray still wasn't stagnant and doing nothing. He had earned some coin from selling the crystals to Himmy before they had left, and now having connections with the Red Brigade clan, he knew if he was to sell them to Elder Yon, he could still get coin for it as well. Since they knew he had connections to the Altar Group, he could now do things he couldn't do before without the others asking questions. Before there was next to nothing that Ray's could do, and now he felt relatively free in his options but there were a few things he needed to do beforehand. At the moment, Reyes, Safa, and Simeon were in the kitchen of the Temple of All Things. They were still currently standing there, and they wanted to have a conversation away from the ears of all the others. This is quite a great place, huh? Simeon said. To think, this is the place where I started my sweet friendship with the two of you. Reyes decided not to comment, and instead held out his hand. Taking the earring off, Simeon rubbed the edge of it, and it snapped open. He then passed it over to Reyes to have a look at. Before, when the earring was sealed, it was impossible to take it off this way no matter what he did. One could only forcefully take it off like Vaughn, but now that the item was unsealed, it could be taken on and off, but as they would soon find out, Simeon was the only one that could use its effects. Give me information on this item. Ray's whispered, with lingering black magic coming out of his mouth. It was quite the sight for Simeon and Safa to see. It hadn't been long since they had seen him perform things that were out of this world. They still hadn't been given an explanation for how it all worked, but after listening to the ones from Altar, it was something maybe they shouldn't ask about. It was up to Ray's if he wanted to tell them more, and he was hoping through this that he would learn more. The text of information appeared right in front of Ray's, and after seeing all of the effects including the grade of the item, the fact it was a mythical item, he couldn't stop smiling. Ha ha! Alter has no idea what they just left in my hands. Although this earring can only work with Simeon now, I'm sure they would have taken it away if they found out about its capabilities. It makes me wonder if at Alter they still have some sealed items as well. So is it good? What can this earring do? I mean the fact that I had a body that was as strong as a sword and as heavy as a rock is already good, but is there anything else? Simeon asked. Your earring, it is certainly special, and you would do well to never let anyone know about its powers or how you obtained them. Otherwise, there will be those after it, Reyes explained. As for the owner of the earring itself, it states that it can give you a steel body. At the moment, your body is at something called the common stage, but it is something that can evolve. As for how it would evolve, I can think of a few things. Either it would need crystals that contain the metal attribute, or perhaps there might be a cultivation technique that can help you gain natural energy as well. Reyes was basing these facts on the knowledge he already had about magical items and how cultivating dark magic increased the power in his core so he assumed that it could do the same thing. The world of Panya was full of cultivation techniques, so he was betting there would be one related to the metal attribute. Wow, so it really is like the steel body refinement technique, Simeon said. Yet, I haven't cultivated or had to go through any of the special training that they have gone through, and there might be easy ways to increase its strength. This whole thing, it feels a bit like a cheat. There. He is a bit more to it as well, Reyes continued. Depending on the different attributes of magic that are induced with the earring, then there is a chance for you to be able to do other things and have other effects as well. Magic? Simeon replied. Magic was something that was known in the world of Pagna, but not in the same way. It referred to when a person would use tricks to fool someone, but it was quite clear that Reyes wasn't referring to this. You saw what me and that young girl could do from before. That's what magic is. People can use a number of different powers with different attributes, 
just like how the earring has given you the power of steel. For now, though, it's best that you don't learn more about it. Just take the earring as a blessing. After finishing his explanation, Ray's handed the earring back. It was useless in his hands, although he probably could have found some way to reveal the earring and try to become its new owner. The whole thing didn't seem worth it, and he had somewhat imagined what Simeon had been through to obtain the earring. Simeon had done no bad to him, and with everything he had been through, he surely deserved the earring. Holding it, Simeon held the earring tight, clenching it in his fist, and then he went down on one knee, facing right at Ray's. Ray's, I don't think you understand how much you have changed my life, Simeon said. I never thought that I would have the strength to become a Pagna warrior, never even thought of besting them, and now all of this has happened. I really think, with this, I can become what I nevertheless thought I wished. I truly thank you, which is why, right here, and right now, I swear my loyalty to both you and Safa, the two of you who were there for me during the whole time. Whatever you need me to do, whatever the cost, I will always do as you ask. Simeon lowered his head, looking down right to the floor. It showed his sincerity in this entire situation, and Ray's was quite taken aback by it all. The whole time I was at Alterian, was there ever a time when someone swore their loyalty to me like this? Perhaps there was one person, one who had never betrayed me. Maybe they are like her, both of them seem honest people. Naturally, Seeing Simeon in such a position, Ray's placed the whole palm of his hand on top of Simeon's head. It didn't feel odd or strange, despite the two of them being close in age, nor was it something Simeon had ever seen before, but he went along with it. With the life I have lived, it has become quite hard for me to trust others, but when I told you about the earring, you were the one who put your trust in me. Despite knowing what I had done, for some reason, you had also decided to keep things to yourself. Safa also has shown her loyalty as she protected what was mine at the cost of her life. Back then, I had given her the choice to accept a family name, and now I am giving the choice to you as well. Do you, Simeon, accept the family name Cromwell? To accept the name, it means we will protect those that bear this name, look out for each other, and never betray the family name. As long as you can accept this name, then I will accept your loyalty to me. There was a burning fire building up in Simeon's belly he had never felt before. He had no clue why Reyes' words sounded so powerful. They didn't sound weak, nor like random words spilled by a kid who knew nothing about the world. Perhaps if Simeon was to follow this person, he would continue to achieve great things, 